Hey everyone. So today I wanted to go over an important topic, which is what do you want to look for when you're trying to seek a new research advisor? Now this is especially important if you're a PhD student because your advisor will greatly impact the kind of experience that you have over the course of these many years you're in grad school. In fact, there's a saying that your research advisor is more important than your research topic. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I do know that I had a few friends who have had their PhDs interrupted because of compatibility issues with their advisor, and some who even had to drop out of their PhD program. So this is something that you wanna put a lot of thought into and hopefully not mess up. So we're gonna to go to the whiteboard and go over a list of things that you should ask yourself when you're trying to find a new research advisor. Let's go. So now that we're here on the whiteboard, I'm gonna write out a list of things or questions you should be asking yourself when you're looking for an advisor, and I'll explain things in detail one by one. All right, so here we go. Number one on the list you should be asking yourself is, what kind of experience does this professor have? Now by experience, I can mean different things. One meaning of experience can be the number of years that professor has been a professor. For instance, if you're starting out with a professor that has just gotten their PhD, you're probably gonna be working with a professor that's out to prove themselves and sort of a young spring chicken, all right? And so their attitude might be different from a veteran professor that has tenure who sort of had that been there, done that type attitude. And that can impact the dynamics of the relationship between you and that advisor and the experience that you have. Another meaning of experience can be how long has that professor been studying this topic of research? For instance, you might have an older professor who has been a professor for a long time, but they're relatively new to this topic of research. And so a professor that has been studying the field for a relatively long time, they probably have a pretty good network. They probably know the community very well. And because they've been thinking about the field for a very long time, they probably know what are the important questions that they should be asking when finding research topics that they want students to be looking into. As you will likely find in research, half of the effort is spent in finding solutions to problems and half of the effort is put into finding the questions themselves. And you wanna make sure that you find the right questions. A professor that is relatively new to the field, they might not know what the important questions are to answer. What you don't want to happen to you is if in your PhD you spent many years trying to solve a question that you later find out has already been solved or is a question that people don't really care about in your community. And having a veteran professor to discuss things with you can help to prevent something like that from happening. That being said, some people want the experience of working with a professor that's new to the field because it probably gives students a little more freedom in what kind of topics to explore. It also gives them a chance to take on more personal responsibility in doing their own due diligence in the research so that they can make sure that whatever it is that they're studying is worth studying. And so the experience of your research advisor, both in terms of the years of professorship or their years spent in the field, this is a very important thing you should be thinking about when searching for a new advisor, especially if you're doing a PhD. Another question that you should be asking yourself when choosing your advisor is, will they support the topic that I am interested in studying? Now, this is a very important question to ask yourself because when you're entering a lab, you wanna make sure that you will have the freedom to do the particular topic that you're interested in doing. It is your time after all. The issue is, let's say you look at the website and the professor is known for studying this particular topic. They might not necessarily still be studying that particular issue. And so you wanna make sure that if you were to pursue that path, that they are interested in supporting you along that journey. Because if they've abandoned that topic and they've lost interest, they probably wouldn't be of much help as an advisor. And on the other hand, if you're studying a topic that is relatively new to the professor that they don't necessarily have any experience with, you wanna make sure that they're willing to go along with you when you're studying this, this new thing that you're interested in. Because they're probably gonna be the ones giving you advice and maybe providing monetary support. And so if they don't support you in your research topic, then 
that's probably not the advisor for you. So this is a very simple and obvious one, but also an important one. I myself wanted to join a lab in college working with a professor after looking at their website and seeing that, oh, they studied something that I was interested in. But after discussing with them, I found out that they didn't study that topic anymore, even though they had spent 10 years of their career looking into this issue. And so make sure to ask yourself this and find out. Now, number three on your list of things you should look for in an advisor. You want to check out what the professor's management style is and whether or not that management style suits you. So if you're lucky, in many cases, your advisor will probably become more of a mentor and a friend. But in the research context, they are essentially like a supervisor if you were to work at a company. And so you want to make sure that you can work well together. And different professors obviously have different management styles because different people are different people. You might have professors who are micromanagers. They want to be aware of all the little experiments that you do and all the steps that you're taking. And they want to be sure that they understand your timeline. On the other hand, you might have professors who are more hands off and they rarely spend time making sure you're on some particular path and they give you a lot more freedom to do what you want. And that will change the dynamic of the work you're doing while you're in that lab. I would also argue that chemistry between you and your advisor falls under this particular point. You can usually have a gut feeling of the chemistry between you and your professor after speaking with them for a couple minutes, although that is only a gut feeling. And sometimes these things do take a little longer to figure out. But you want to make sure that the relationship between you and your professor you want to make sure that you two vibe, I guess is the, the word that I'm looking for. And sometimes they might take a little longer to realize. So if you like, you can maybe try to do some sort of rotation. And that would give you a little more time in figuring out what kind of working relationship you have, what it's like to work with this particular professor. Another point you want to think about when looking for an advisor is what is their availability like? And the reason I bring this topic up is because different professors might have different availability to their students. And it can be because of a variety of different reasons. I've known professors who have just very, very large groups because they're so popular. I know of professors who are very famous that you've probably heard of who are traveling all the time and they're consulting. And because their time is so valuable, their consulting is worth thousands of dollars per hour. And so it's very difficult for students to schedule time to speak with them. And so having a professor who is very well known and popular isn't necessarily best for every student. Other professors, they aren't traveling as much. And so there's more availability for students to just walk by their office and speak with them. It all depends on what kind of obligations this professor already has. I was very lucky at the schools that I went to, pretty much all the professors were very well known and very famous in their field. But different professors did have varying degrees of scheduling. And so I preferred a professor with slightly more availability because I enjoyed talking to my professor on a regular basis when I had to. But this is a question that you need to ask yourself and it varies from student to student what they need. Next on the list that you should be asking yourself when looking for an advisor is, what is their funding situation like? Now, depending on the funding situation of the professor, it can also impact whether or not a student would want to join their group. For instance, some students are trying to join a lab because they also need funding for their PhDs. They don't have an external source of funding. And so eventually they would like that professor to provide monetary support in helping them in their years of grad school so that they can eventually graduate. Most professors in institutions, they have to be able to bring in grants and money in order to pay for everything and remain a professor. But some professors might have more funding available so that they can hire more students, spend more money on experiments. And some professors who are relatively new, they might be more strapped for funding. And so that only allows for students to join their group only if they have their own source of funding, like an external fellowship. And so if you are a student where you know that eventually you're going to need monetary support from the professor, then you probably want to try and understand what kind of funding situation that particular professor has and whether or not, let's say, your own personal funding dries up whether that professor will be able to continue to support you. In addition to that, some professors, 
They also teach courses during the school year. And so they will have a source of funding through TA ships. And often they might ask their own students to TA for their class so that the department can help pay for their salary. And so depending on what the professor's funding situation is like and what your own funding situation is like, that might be a factor that you look into when determining a professor. Of course, if you're fortunate enough and you have your own external funding for several years, then the funding situation from the professor doesn't necessarily matter to you because you can join whoever you like. And that's the nice thing about having your own fellowship is that you're not necessarily tied to a particular group. You can just pursue whatever topic it is that you're interested in. All right, last but also incredibly important on the list is Now this is probably more relevant for PhD students, but what are the requirements for graduation that this particular advisor has for their students? Like what does this professor value when it comes to students generating work? Some professors, when they're trying to determine when a student can graduate, they solely look on number of publications and they want them to fulfill a certain number before they're allowed to graduate. On the other hand, I've also worked with professors where they didn't necessarily care about the number of publications, but they did look at the volume of research that you're doing and the content that you're providing so that they can use that content to write their own grants. And so some professors, they don't necessarily look at number of publications. They also look at quantity of work. And different professors value different metrics when it comes to uh, looking at your productivity as a student. If you're a student that also has the mentality of, oh, I want to publish as much as I can when I'm a student, then you probably want to go with a professor that has the same mindset as you. On the other hand, if you're a student that doesn't value publications as much, but you do, of course, you obviously have to care about the quality of your work and making good content and having good volume of research, then you might want to work with a professor who is aligned with that. And personally, I've worked with some amazing students, like literally the best at what they do, who didn't publish very much as PhD students, uh, and they were still allowed to graduate. And so in case you're wondering, the length of your publication list isn't always the best indicator of whether or not a grad student is good. That being said, if you are trying to become a professor, they do probably care about that publication list, and so that's something you want to prioritize. All right, so I guess that's pretty much the list. I hope you learned something today, and again, Having a good research advisor is very important. You want to put some thought into it. And these are a couple things, questions that you should be asking yourself when you are trying to find that new advisor. And I hope that this list can help you. And a lot of these things would apply, whether it is you're finding an advisor for your PhD program, or if you're just finding a research advisor as an undergrad. So I hope you learned something today. Good luck with everything. And I'll see you next time.